I think uh, this is a uh, frontier of, uh, of theoretical and also experimental uh, science today. Uh, the field of electrochemistry is, of course, uh, quite old and uh, has made many contributions to society. There's a resurgence of interest right now, uh, driven by interest in uh, energy storage, for example, batteries, fuel cells, uh, supercapacitors, also in terms of uh, chemical separations and processing, for example, related to the environment, uh, water treatment and purification, desalination, uh, remediation of soils and things like that, which are done with electrochemical means. Uh, also, there's uh, a lot of opportunities for using electrochemistry for materials processing. So for example, you know, making certain kinds of porous materials or other chemicals by electrochemical means. Um, one of the uh, largest uh, industrial processes is in fact uh, aluminum production by the hall heru process, which is an electrochemical process. Uh, so, so electrochemistry clearly has a lot of importance uh, in uh, society and is a major topic today in engineering. Um, and on the other hand, I would say that sort of the theory of understanding electrochemical systems, uh, although quite well developed for um, at least a century now, still has a, a lot of opportunity to grow and, and, and advance. And I think that's really a big part of what's happening today. And I'm uh, part of that myself in, in, in trying to understand the dynamics of electrochemical systems. So by dynamics, I mean how does the system respond to uh, some kind of forcing? So for example, you, you, know, you ha apply a voltage and you start to get a reaction or you start to get a fluid flow or you start producing some uh, deposit. Uh, how does that actually happen in time and space? Uh, so of course, you know, that's always been an important part of the field. But the understanding of the dynamics has frequently been empirical, uh, just observed experimentally and not necessarily understood in a deep theoretical way. Uh, and I believe that today there's a lot of opportunity and interest in uh, a better understanding of the nonlinear response of the systems. And when I say nonlinear, what I mean is the dynamics in response to a large perturbation. So in general, in physics, if uh, you have, or in mathematics even, if you have some kind of system and you do a small perturbation to it, then you get a small response. And generally, the uh, applied forcing is proportional to the response, and that's so-called linear response. That's true of all systems. If you take, for example, a spring and you just push on it a little bit, the force displacement relationship is linear. But if you push really hard, it starts to deviate from that, and that's nonlinearity. Um, so in electrochemical systems, the analog would be when we apply a voltage, if it's just a small voltage, whether it's steady state or time dependent, we get a small current in response or a small motion of the charged species, the ions in the system. And, and in fact, the theory of linear response is well established. It's, for example, involves the diffusion equation and other well-known uh, models uh, that are extensively used in electrochemistry and in fact, more broadly in chemistry and physics. But in electrochemical systems, though, there are very important nonlinearities uh, that need to be understood. Uh, so for example, when you have ions, which are charged uh, species that are always involved in electrochemical reactions, uh, they experience uh, Coulomb interactions or electrostatic forces. And so you have a combination of transport by diffusion, transport by electromigration in response to electric fields, and also convection. And there's coupling between the f any fluid flow that occurs and the charges. So it gets into the field of electrohydrodynamics. Uh, and then all of that complex nonlinear transport is also related to nonlinearities in reactions. Uh, so when you apply uh, an overpotential, which is a voltage different from the equilibrium voltage of a system, you generate a current. And for a small current applied, that relationship is linear. But as you go to a high voltage, a variety of nonlinearities kick in. And typically, there can be very strong, even exponential dependence of the current on the applied voltage. And uh, uh, even beyond just the charge transfer rate, there also can be coupling between the reaction kinetics and other complex nonlinear processes involving thermodynamics. So for example, you may have a material which is undergoing a phase transformation in response to an electrochemical reaction. That's a very nonlinear problem. And sort of having a, a clear uh, description uh, of, of it and theoretical understanding is something that you know, many scientists are working on today and I think is sort of at the frontier of uh, of, uh, of, of science today.
So uh, let me give just a few examples uh, from my own research that I've been involved in that I do think uh, uh, illustrate the principles I've just been describing. So uh, the first um, would be the topic of induced charge electroosmosis. So uh, electroosmosis is, a, is an electrokinetic phenomena, meaning that it is in the class of phenomena that describe uh, that involve the motion of particles or fluids in response to electric fields. And specifically, when you have an electrochemical system, you have typically a liquid electrolyte, which is a solution of positive and negative ions, cations and anions. And typically, electrolytes are neutral, so roughly equal numbers of positive and negative. But near charged surfaces, which might be the walls of a porous material or, or the, the pores, it might be the surface of an electrode. There are always uh, imbalances of positive and negative charges, which lead to the formation of a so-called double layer, where there's a certain charge on the surface and then an equal and opposite charge distributed in the electrolyte through this imbalance of positive and negative charge. Electroosmosis is the phenomenon of uh, motion of the fluid generated when an electric field is applied and pushes on those charges in solution to get the fluid moving. That's a well-established subject. In fact, we just recently celebrated the 200-year anniversary of the discovery of electrophoresis, which is a related phenomenon, motion of a charged particle through an electrolyte in response to electric field, which was done by Royce in, uh, I think, 1808. Uh, so we've just passed that point. But in most of those 200 years, the uh, theory has been essentially a linear response theory, that you get a motion of a particle or a motion of a fluid in proportion to the field that's applied. So an area that I've been involved in is trying to understand situations where there's a strong nonlinear response. And a good example of that is when the surface does not have a fixed charge, but instead is better approximated by a fixed potential. So for example, a metallic surface, uh, because there the surface charge will respond to the field and hence the ions in solution respond to the field and you get a, a nonlinear behavior, which for example can go like this field squared. Another, so that's an example in electrokinetics. There's also our examples in electrochemical kinetics. So if we ask ourselves, uh, what is the reaction rate in a given system at an electrode, which I mentioned earlier, there are nonlinearities having to do with uh, sort of the charge transfer process itself at, at the molecular level. But another interesting class of nonlinearities that I have focused on is to understand how do you model and, under, and, and, and describe electrochemical reactions that are coupled to phase transformations. So for example, in lithium ion batteries, you may be inserting a lithium ion into some host solid crystal structure, for example, iron phosphate. And in a material like that, it may be that the uh, ions have a strong interaction with each other, which makes them want to stay at high density and avoid regions of low density. So in other words, the material phase separates into iron phosphate and lithium iron phosphate. And it's becoming important in today's batteries, which involve very small particles, nanoparticles, uh, to better understand those surface reaction kinetics and how they couple to such phase separation processes. And so that's another frontier of research, and I've uh, been involved in trying to understand how, how to couple the non-equilibrium thermodynamics electrochemical systems with uh, electrochemical kinetics and charge transfer theory. One important uh, source of nonlinearity comes from placing electrolyte in a porous material or also today in a microchannel or a lab on a chip device where you have surfaces with those double layers that I mentioned earlier uh, playing a large role. And in particular, uh, when you apply a large current through a porous medium or microchannel, the effects of those surfaces can be to give you transport pathways essentially along the surface, so-called surface conduction or electroosmotic flow, which allow the ions to get where they need to go faster than they would in a bulk system. And this process can lead to the formation of very sharp discontinuities in ion concentration, which we call deionization shocks. And uh, that spontaneous sort of uh, separation of high and low salt in a material due to the nonlinear dynamics of the transport is providing an opportunity for new kinds of separations in electrochemical processes. So in particular, I'm working on applying it to water 
uh, desalination through a process I call shock electrodialysis, which is some kind of generalization or variation on the classical uh, method of electrodialysis, which uses membranes to separate ions. But here, we're separating based on the nonlinear dynamics of charges in a porous uh, material. So the field of nonlinear dynamics of electrochemical systems is still quite new, and really I think a lot of major advances still lie ahead. So some of the topics I just mentioned are really at an early stage and really understanding them from both a mathematical modeling and quantitative point of view and also an experimental point of view. And finally, also in terms of possible applications that could emerge from that understanding. One particular topic of interest, uh, which has been going on for decades, but for which there's rapid progress now, is the issue of passing very large currents through electrolytes. One way of getting a, a transport faster than a, a bulk electrolyte would allow under normal conditions is to have a porous material. But also there are interesting hydrodynamic phenomena having to do with uh, sort of vigorous uh, vortices of convection that can form when you pass a large current, let's say, from electrolyte to a membrane or electrode. And that process is still not fully understood. And then another level of complexity is when the electrochemical reactions lead to the dynamics of some kind of interface. So the classical example, which is still very important today and not fully understood, is dendritic growth in electrodeposition. This is the reason we can't use lithium metal for battery anodes. It would be the perfect material, except that when you try to recharge the battery, you're electrodepositing lithium, and that forms little fingers or dendrites that, that can grow and, and basically short circuit the cell. So there's still a lot of work remaining to be done, in particular on these problems where we begin to get uh, interfacial motion from a phase transformation, such as in electrodeposition, because we're coupling electrochemical kinetics with transport, with reactions, and which, with the motion of a boundary. That's a very difficult problem, even to formulate the correct equations for that system, and then also to solve those equations numerically on a computer is still a very challenging problem. And then ultimately to couple with experiments and try to understand whether the models are even valid when you're so far from equilibrium. <laughs>